Alright, go to the one right across from it. Oh, no. But it's here. And this would be on that side if someone has installed this. You notice that? Uh, go outside and see what my overflow is. Don't want to end, cause I got something to prove. I gotta take what I hate and finally make a move. I think of you and all the shit you don't do. Well, I'ma make hella shit that I don't become you. Ha! No regrets, yeah, I'll tied up my chest I'll never forget what it's like to be in debt Been stabbed in the back, bed. I'll show you what happens Pass me the mic and I'll show you with action I feel this pain, you already know Turn that to games, let my money show all right, today's video is kind of a fun one. Uh, we finally got all of our water maker parts in. So we end up going with a Seawater Pro uh, 40 gallon per hour dual membrane uh, water maker. This is the 110 system. Um, so we'll run it through our inverter or generator. And I'm just gonna be doing a real detailed install video. Um, for those of you who don't know what a water maker is, um, it basically picks up salt water through a through hole runs it through a series of filters, sends it through a couple membranes of high pressure, and then dumps into our tanks as drinking water, purified drinking water, which is awesome when we're offshore. So we'll be able to make our own drinking water from the salt underneath. There's a lot of components to it. Um, I'm also gonna show, like this is a kit you buy and then hook up, but I'm also gonna show how I'm gonna hook it up to the through hole, um, how all that work, kind of start to finish for anyone who maybe has questions about this system. Um, so we kind of went back and forth for a while. We really like this system because it's modular. And as you'll see in here, I'm gonna, I'm not putting everything in one spot. I'm gonna blow it up and kind of put it in different spots, mainly in the engine room area. But my whole idea with that is point of use. Everything in this system is very serviceable. Um, so I wanna have like, you know, we have pre-filters that need to be changed on a regiment. We have a, the high pressure pump has a regiment to change oil in the pump itself. Um, membranes, you do at some point, you're gonna change membranes if they dry out or whatever. So point being is it's not just about shoving stuff in a hole where you have space. Um, it's also about point of use stuff that I can actually maintain the system. Um, if we get a leak on one of our lines or something, I wanna be able to see it for the most part on the high pressure lines and everything. So I don't wanna hide everything away too much. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna give a run through um, what we're doing. Uh, just give it a run through what, how I'm going to set it up. And so some people may not do it this way, but uh, I think this will be a good setup video for anyone who has questions or just curious. Like if you're looking to buy one, you're like, what does it entail? It's not, I would say, a super difficult job, but there's also a lot of aspects, a lot of parts to install. So I wouldn't say it's a small job. Difficulty, I don't think that bad, but time-wise, it takes a while. Um, and then on the flip side of that, if my eye looks jacked up in this video, it is. I woke up. We got something going on in my eye, but uh, so if it looks all watery and pissed off, that uh, it is. So, um, anyway, so we'll get started. Living life every day, late at night, not okay. All I want and I pray, all I need are some better days. It's a good looking unit, but the simplicity is the big thing for me. Um, and it's it has all the bells and whistles while keeping the simplicity i mean we even have a back flush meter they send you too so i can program my back flushes um to basically takes a little bit of fresh water and it pumps all the salt water back out of the system so that you know if you're making water every couple days or whatever the couple days in between you'll have salt water sitting there building up stuff or growing stuff you know inside your membranes so it's a pretty cool setup we did a lot of research i've seen nothing but good reviews from these guys um, so, uh, if you, you know, watch a setup, if you like it, if you got comments, comment below. Um, I'm pretty honest. I'll tell you my exact opinion, but so far we really like the kit. Definitely recommend seeing all the parts all look high quality. Uh, I think it's gonna be a good kit for us so far. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to start putting some stuff in and um, we're going to start with a through haul. I already mounted the, the membranes. Um, we'll start with through haul, work on high pressure. So it'll be, this will be a fairly long video. Um, bear with me if you want to see. I always can fast forward through stuff, <laughs> whatever works. But yeah, I want to be in depth. I don't want to leave stuff out and do a big overview. So if anyone's kind of intimidated by this, I don't think this is a high level difficulty, but just uh, pay attention to what you're doing basically. So this is, should be a good reference for those people. Step one, wake up early, go rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. 
Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day Yo, Set your affirmations, aspirations I got shit to do, the aftermath of preparation Good food, good mood So the panel's installed Let's make it light Kinda see it in there, we kinda wanted to put it out of the way Alright We looked at some spots in the bulkhead and stuff And it was just, you gotta keep in mind what's behind there You got fitting and stuff, you don't wanna bury what's behind In my eyes, I don't wanna bury what's behind So Everything in here, I'll be able to access from the engine room. I'll be able to see every fitting, every water line. I can check for leaks, kind of do routine maintenance and stuff. So, um, to each their own. But we wanted to put in a spot where point of use was really nice, and I could also access the backside. So that worked out pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to work on the through haul portion. So down here is our through haul uh, for our. Uh, saltwater pickup for our toilet. Now we have a composting toilet, so we will be converting back to a normal toilet shortly. Um, can't stand that thing. And uh, so what I'm going to do is this through hole isn't being used right now. It was plugged. I'm actually going to put a T on it. Um, dead head one of one side that's going to go to the toilet in the future, and then the other side will run through and go to the water maker. So I'm going to build a little. Um, I got a whole bunch of brass fittings. I'm going to build like a little manifold um, with quite a few valves on it. And uh, yeah, so run through that real quick. And then that's where we're going to pull our water from. This one right here will be going into the engine room here. I'm just gonna use this uh, water exhaust hose. This is good stuff. Um, this is the Exoflex stuff. If you haven't used this stuff before, it's like marine, or it's wet exhaust hose basically, what I use on a lot of stuff because it's durable, but it does tight bends and moves a lot better than the, the smooth looking stuff. So this will be good because I'm actually going to run it underneath the floor up to the stringers and then I'll be putting the lift pump here, high pressure on the back, membranes, you kind of see how it's coming together basically. So everything should be in close proximity. I don't want to make big runs. Um, it is a modular kit like I said, so I was going to have it in different areas, but I didn't want to get crazy carried away and have it way away from each other. So um, yeah, we'll get to plumbing that now. All right, so now we're to wiring up the pump. So these things don't come pre-wired, so they just come with a junction box. And then the instructions tell you, and then also there's a tag here if you're running it for 110 or 240. This is just a standard AC motor, so depending on how you wire it, you can wire it for 110 or 240 single phase. So um, it's not super scary to do, um, but I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So um, <clears throat> this being 110, you could use house wiring. Um, I don't care to use it, like solid core stuff. Um, I'll use a multi-strand and I'll go, this stuff's definitely a little more expensive, but I'll use this multi-strand. This is 10 gauge multi-strand and this is the waterproof oil resistance, uh, oh, yeah. waterproof oil resistant. Basically what that is, is they're copper multi-strands and they're tin coated usually. So that helps with corrosion. Um, so this is stuff I use any wiring I have to about always I do this because there's moisture everywhere and that's what's going to get in and eat stuff um, And then what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to um, in A lot of AC applications motors you see people put wire nuts on here um, Don't use wire nuts on boats. It's just a asking for moisture and stuff to get in the wire wire nuts um, Again, so I'm going to actually use a solder Connection I'm going to crimp and solder these on and then these come with a 
waterproof cover here too. So when you, usually you oh, cut this rubber, and then as you tighten it, these crimps down holds on the wire. Make sure you don't go crazy cutting it. You want to just poke it through, and then you want to push it the wire through, and kind of force it through so it's got a seal. So it's little things you'll probably find if you don't. But wiring doesn't just break down. It's when moisture gets into it, then it starts corroding. So if you seal everything up really good take the extra second to do it right this wire wire will last freaking as long as the boat does but i think people just you know kind of get in a hurry and they don't do it good so i'm just going to kind of show you how i do it and um this will be a for sure where your moisture 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 won't get into the connections and corrode out because then it causes resistance and heat and all sorts of bad stuff all right so i'm installing these like i was saying earlier these actually squish down when you tighten to squeeze on to the cable. And then, so we're gonna make a small hole here. He hasn't used these, it's really easy to make a big hole and also it doesn't fit. So I'll just go right in the middle. Put a loop in on my ground. The ground will ground to the body right here, the motor. All right, so lighting kind of sucks. It's getting dark here, so, but like I said, there's a code here or three wires. Just double check which three go into each leg. It doesn't matter which leg because it's AC, so they flip back and forth, so it doesn't matter which one. Um, so you'll see here I use crimps. Yeah, like I said, not wire nuts. I'm sure someone in the comments will bitch about that, but you know what? That's just how I'm going to do it. So we crimped and soldered, or sorry, crimped and heat shrunk, not soldered. And then I'm gonna actually even slide these over here too. And the reason I like the crimps as well, instead of soldering, is crimps are nice for vibration. And so if this thing starts wiggling by rain, the heat shrink's not gonna let anything move around. Good solid crimp should be good for the long haul. And then it's gonna be sealed on this side and there's a gasket on this cover too. So once it's all put away, it's double heat shrunk, sealed gasket, sealed gasket. No moisture or anything should ever get in here. And then you can see I mounted the ground down here on the case. And that should have it all hooked up. So, yeah, just follow the legend on the side for which ones go and which leg. And then that's all will be hooked up in this. And then I'll have this nice loom coming out. So you can see here, got them all heat shrunk. Get them nice and hot until it pushes the goo out so you know it's sealed. And then we'll tie these up and put the cover back on. And you might be wondering why I'm hooking all this wiring up now. Um, just a little tip if you can see this is the mount here let's see if i can get a better shot this is the mount here so if you get real excited when you mount this first getting in from this underside of this box it would be just a total pain so i'll actually gonna secure this up oh, that's the wrong way it's gonna go this way so i'm actually gonna secure this up so that when it mounts this thing will kind of be in this thing will kind of be in a sharp angle, but anyways, it'll be in there. It'll be secure um, because my experience, whenever I, you know, you try to come in from the bottom, 
while this is mounted and you're trying to get these hooked up, it's always just a bad fit and you've got tension on wires and all that stuff. So this way I can tie this thing up out of the way and then I'll put my mount and anyone who's pushed with this is a one horse engine. I think it's one horse. Yeah, one horse engine. Um, with the pump on here, this thing weighs quite a bit to maneuver around. So um, I don't, once you put it up there once, you're not going to take it down if you're like me. So yeah, so this one's wired up. Now the wire, I'm going to mount this and that wire is going to go to the switch. And then that switch will go to a plug-in. Um, with this one, I'm actually going to end up putting in this to a 110 plug-in in. I have an outlet in my engine room. So rather than hardwire this to the panel, I have just an outlet that dedicated one breaker. So that'll be a water maker. Uh, the brake will be for the water maker, and if I still keep my outlet in there, so which I want to do. So yeah, let's try to get this thing mounted now. All right, so we're gonna try to wall mount this guy. It weighs quite a bit, so Steph's on the other side of the bulkhead. I'm gonna try and hold this thing up while she puts some nuts on the other side of these bolts. All right, I'm gonna put it in place. Okay. I go to the one right across from it. Oh, really? So pumps mounted over there. Let's see how it'll focus. Pumps mounted over there. Got wiring everywhere. So I'm gonna hook up my boost pump now that the high pressure is over there. So we go from the through hole, and then we're gonna go to uh, a C strainer. So you need something to catch debris, um, so it doesn't get sucked into the pump. Um, I chose to run just a little simple, uh, this is a bilge pump C strainer for like a uh, remote bilge pump system. Um, something cheap, easy. Just got a little screen in here. It doesn't have to be anything super elaborate. Um, some people might run like a uh, C strainer for like an engine C strainer, um, but that's kind of overkill for me. So I want to keep it small, simple. Shouldn't be sucking up that much stuff anyways. Um, so I'm gonna mount this down here and then I'm gonna mount the lift pump here and then the lift pump will push the high pressure over there. All right, so we're gonna hook up this pump now. I'm gonna mount this before I actually mount the strainer. Uh, this will give me a better idea of where I, a good spot for the strainer will be. Um, this is more sensitive to mount. So we're gonna do that first and then I'll actually do the strainer. All right, so you can see down here, kind of tucked away, I got the pump mounted low. Uh, water level, they said in the instructions to make sure this is not a self-priming, so make sure that it's below water level. Um, on this boat, my water line's up here, the motor sits pretty low, so we're well below that. Um, but yeah, so I got it mounted here. I kind of put it in an angle, they got this weird, uh, in is vertical. Could always put a 90 on, I thought about it, but um, I actually honestly didn't want to run to the hardware store again. So I kind of tilted a little, so you got this one going up, but this will be the out. This is a push lock fitting, and the in is just a three quarter. So then right here, I'm gonna mount the strainer, and then I'll hook up my through all hose. All right, so I still gotta stow some wiring up, but I got the pump mounted down here. I've got the C strainer here. So what I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned, before I hook this hose up, right here, let's see if I can get out the light. I'm gonna open the through hole, and this should fill up with water. All right, so yeah, I hit that through hole, water started coming through, and what that'll just do is it shows that this is low enough in the hole below the water line that when that through hole is open, there'll be a little bit of water pressure on here. So when this pump kicks on, it'll be able to pull the water through. It's not priming, not self-priming. So self-priming means the pump will just run. And if there's no water here, it won't actually be able to suck water to it. You know, it's like pulling a siphon. Um, it needs water up against it, and then it can pull water through and it'll suck a little bit. But yeah, it's one thing you want to make sure. I've got a little bit of a long route to get to the C strainer and pump here, just the way mine's laid out. Um, I didn't want to have it down here, so um, just the way I had to do it to fit underneath my floor. Um, that's why I do it this way, but I kept it low. So there's at least that steady water pressure. So now it's gonna go from here 
over to the high pressure pump and then so on and so forth the system and then i'm gonna clean some stuff up as it looks pretty messy in here because i've got a bunch of my wiring down and all that stuff because i'm routing everything right now all right so i'm doing some wiring now uh one thing i noticed on this uh crap one thing i noticed on this is you have this waterproof box for the back of the switches but you have to run your 110 in out and then your 12 volt from your boost pump in out and then they're screw on style uh connections so putting that involves putting the wires in here first pulling this down wiring everything up and then putting it back in my experience is just that's that's pain i don't want to do that so uh hats off to all you guys that fought that <laughs> what i did is i'm going to clean it up but i just took the jigsaw or jigsaw um you know jigsaw I took the jigsaw and I just cut this piece out so then now what I can do with this piece cut out is I can wire everything up and then bolt this up and just have the wires come through here instead of fighting them all the way through I just bolt this up and then I'll just I'll have this sanded up and I can just take a little bit of sealant and I can just slide that into place right and then I'll seal this all in here too but that way a little tip makes it a lot easier just to put the cover over this is really supposed to, it's not watertight. It's just supposed to think, I assume, keep direct water from splash. I'm actually gonna go the extra and seal it up and everything. But yeah, just a little tip. You know, it doesn't have to be super clean. I can take the sander, clean it up, and then boom. But yeah, that'll help with this cover back got. here. So we've got the pump over there, the boost pump, sorry, that comes through. And then it goes to this controller, which goes up, and this is a 12 volt DC, remember? So this is the boost pump, goes over, and then I've got it hooked into the 12 volt DC side. And then it comes into my fuse box or my fuse panel here. Now technically that's a fuse breaker switch, but I just believe in redundant fuses. Um, and then the AC is the one I wanted to show. You can see it coming from the motor. I'm actually gonna put my end, I'm not gonna hardwire. I'm gonna put it through a plug in here. So, um, now you have to have the switch size interrupted. With AC, you've got your neutral, your white, neutral, and then your ground, your green, and then black's power. Now with AC, because it goes back and forth, you have three wires, right? But black is your hot. So black's the one that we're gonna break and put on the switch here. So what I did is I just passed through with the green and the white. They'll just pass through and these will be wrapped up. And then um, these will be hooked to this breaker switch here and same on 12 volt just the hot side breaks here and then i just ran the ground pass through around here so um anyways yeah so with 110 you just gotta interrupt the black wire and that'll be your switch surface um i use heat shrinks on here again uh a lot of 110 applications and houses you can use wire nuts for me don't use wire nuts on a boat uh they're not supposed to don't do it. Um, so I'm sure someone on the freaking comments will bitch about the way I'm doing this or the connectors or they saw something online. I don't know, but I've done a lot of wiring. Nothing's ever caught on fire. My biggest thing is keeping moisture out of here. These will be wrapped up too. These are heat shrink crimps with heat shrink on them. Um, so everything here is going to keep the moisture out and then I'll have the cover on here when it's done. And I'm going to seal that in too. So, uh, yeah, if this is not the way you want to do it, fine. But this is just showing my process and how I'm doing it for anyone. Because the one thing I found is the instructions were really good for a lot of it, but the wiring was super vague. I mean, you had to wire up the motor, which was nice to have that. But wiring the 110, um, the way I'm wiring up is just common knowledge uh, for me because I'm work on boats for a living. Um, so this, but through the instructions, they don't really show this. He, I watched his video nothing against them they just said wire this up and you're done but there's actually a process to hooking it up um this way um the plug-in method too uh most people probably hardwire it to a dedicated fuse on the panel but i have my engine room outlet it's only two it has its own dedicated fuse it has an engine room outlet so what i'm going to do is i'm putting it on a plug um instead of hardwiring it because it only has a 10 amp draw it doesn't draw that much actually um it's only 10 amp so then it leaves another plug in the engine room so the engine room breaker will just be a dedicated to the water maker really but if i want to put a light on whatever if i'm in here drilling or using a power tools i use this plug to actually work my engine room i won't be around the water maker so i just run the same time so 
anyways, uh, most people probably hardwire, but I'm gonna go with the plug method. I like the plug method, it makes it easier, it gives me options. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna finish getting this button up and then I'll take a picture when it's done, but I just wanna do a quick run through of the electrical. Um, if you do have questions, I, I didn't cover, I may have missed. Um, but yeah, I didn't, if anyone's doing this, it, it didn't cover that really well. I just am going off of wiring other systems up. All right, so here's the finished product. Well, not finished, but it's wired up, I guess. You can kind of see in there. Um, got it P-clipped all around to kind of keep it straight. Um, biggest thing is you've got, yeah, like I said, 12 volt on this side, 110 on this side, power bolt line coming out, output input up top. Um, so you just want to make sure nothing's ever going to sit through, you know, melt, get loose, hot, whatever. So I'm going to tighten this up here and then put the cover back on. We'll see how it looks when I do that. So this is all wired up. I got the plug-in in there. That's what I was talking about. Covers on. And that's the lift pump down there. Went and toggled the switches. Lift pump kicked on. Just kicked on for a second. And then I hit the high pressure, just kicked on for a second too. Um, there's no water in it, so you don't want to run the pressure side of the pump. Needs water to lubricate. Uh, so I just bumped them basically. So now that that works, now I gotta start doing plumbing. But a lot of the tedious stuff is done. Um, yeah, just hooking up a few plumbing here and there, and then the pre filters, and then I can test this thing out. So getting close. Okay, so I got the pre filters mounted. I didn't videotape this because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it shows you a layout, but basically got a one-way valve that comes in. This will be the water input, and then it goes through these guys, 20 and a five micron, and then that's gonna go low pressure to here and then high pressure to the membranes. Um, I also switched mine. So in the, the drawing, the input's here, and this would be on that side if someone has installed this and notice that um, I did that because it doesn't make any sense. My lift pump or my lift pump, my boost pump is down here. So it makes sense to come up here. The water will go through and then this will come to here. Otherwise I have all these circles. Um, but you can see I kept everything pretty close proximity on this project. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's a drain plug under here. And so getting to the drain plug is different than actually be able to drain the oil out too. See, it's right back here little gold plug right there so it's getting it off is one thing so I actually reclocked this pump you know I first bolted it up and just had this straight up where this mount would have been down so I ended up reclocking so I could wall mount it and that gave me this and then the fill is up here so you got to be able to maintain this I think that every 300 hours you're doing fluid so um, and it's just standard motor oil they said you can use which is pretty cool I'm just gonna match it with what I use for my engine but uh in outs here you can change it if you wanted to in outs on here too it didn't benefit me but it's cool they have the option um so with this system the outs going to come here to this and then this will come to there so everything's really close they give you a bunch of hose i'm not going to end up using a whole lot of it that's the back flush so that'll get hooked in my fresh water system which i really like the back flush function and it's all mechanical so you hook it up to your pressurized water system so i'll tee it into my my sink water and i've got a sink run right here i can tee it off of but you tee it into the sink pressure so we have a pressurized hose and this just says two double a batteries and when the timer goes it clicks and then what it does it comes through the carbon filter goes through the one-way valve it can't go back it can't go back into the salt water side and it just goes through the filters through this pump through your membranes and that's how it does the back flush system. So I was kind of unclear on how that was gonna work until I started really looking at it. But the cool thing is they don't have any circuit boards on this. There's no, you know, it's auto back flush, but there's really no big master system. It's a pretty simple setup. So I just thought it was kind of cool. So now I'm gonna start taking, they have this um, PEX kind of style water line, nothing super fancy, but I'm gonna take it and start doing all these compression fittings. So I just wanna take a quick shot before I start getting there, and then I'm gonna run my high pressure lines too. All right, so I haven't been videotaping as much, just cause I'm just kinda of hooking all the plumbing up and it's pretty straightforward. They give you a layout, um, but I figured I'd show this. 
So everything's taped off and sealed because these membranes will dry out if they're not. So you don't want to pull these plugs until you're ready to put new plugs in. But the center plug they put in, that's the white hose. That will be, it's not here. That'll be the white hose in that center red plug. And that will be the clean water coming through the membrane. So it would be like post filtered. And then these elbows here that take the high pressure, that's gonna be your salt water. So it's gonna come in salt water, go around. And then this red plug stays in on this side, but the rest of the red plugs have to come off. And you're gonna put one of these compression push in style fittings in. So you're just gonna thread it in. All right, so we got that fitting in. And with these push in fittings too, if you've never used them before, they'll kind of go in a little bit. They go in a little bit and they actually grab on the outer retainer. And you'll push these in and pull out to remove them, but they're not easy. So make sure you got you're ready to put it in because pulling them out is always a bear. And then see that? See that fall in right there? Now it's in there. So basically you have that retainer here, which is that piece that you pull out. If you want to pull it off. This right here will grab on as soon as you put it in, but it actually needs to go back until it hits that seal surface back there. So you'll feel it drop in probably about a half inch, but just some word to wise they didn't know in there. And if someone is doing this and hasn't used these fittings before, um, yeah, it's it's easy to push and stop. And if it, you only feel it going like an eighth inch and it stops, wiggle it around until you feel it do that. It'll really fall into place. You'll you'll feel it. You'll know as soon as it happens. But and then after that, that's going to be our fresh water coming out of the membranes, and it's going to go to the flow gauge here. And then we also have our TDS sensor here. So what this does is basically goes right below, depending on wherever I want to put it, goes right in here. Um, and this will give us our total dissolved solids meter on the outside, which is pretty cool. It's just sitting here and that'll tell us where our membranes are going. came up with here. Um, so we're getting down to the wire on this project. Um, so this is the white stuff is the, will be the clean fresh water out of the water maker. So after obviously the whole goal of this is to make fresh water. And so when it's all done back here, it goes through this three eighths hose drinkable water and uh, will come out and goes in the tank. So this boat has fiberglass tanks, good size fiberglass tanks, which, and there's a number of options we can do to tap in, but again, at some point we're gonna have to tap in to the tanks, right? So this is what I came up with. It's a, like more like a less evasive, I'd say. Um, you know, if you are lucky enough to have extra ports on your tank, I mean, that's a no brainer. You just hook it to a port. We don't have that. And so kind of thought about drilling, tapping, epoxy and something in but uh but we have water in there so i don't want to drill in drop fiberglass in our water tanks we just cleaned all this stuff yada yada so what they do with the kit they send you with a few extras of these compressions fittings and they kick down to a quarter mbt which is pretty small so i went back and forth on what i do and when i came up with this and this might not be for everyone is i'm actually going to tee into my fill hose all right so this is what i came up with you can see here the fill line comes in here to the tank i've got this little t here now and then there's our fresh water line coming in and you can't really tell here in this video but basically it comes down and then it levels and then comes back down so the idea is when this thing comes, it should just free pour down that it's an inch and a half fill tube just three eighths line there should be no way it's going to come up this way or ever and so that way it'll do a nice trickle into the tanks there should be a good little setup honestly it's kind of bohemothy looking but it's all good, taped off, everything should be happy. So I'll check for leaks and make sure that it's actually holding up because I just reused the old hose instead of replacing it. It looks dirty, but it looks clean on the inside. It's a nice, so why add more work and cost to it? Um, so now I'm gonna go hook it, that up on the other end. Now they got it fished through all the way to the water maker. All right, so one of the projects working on today is the overflow valve. It has a through haul in it. Um, yeah, you drill on the side of the boat for it to the overflow. The salt water runs through the system and then it goes to the regulator and then overflow goes over the side. Um, the hose they put with it isn't long enough. So I center mounted this in my engine room. Isn't long enough to make it all the way to their side with going under the floor and out. And um, I hate punching new holes in the boat. Um, 
physically putting holes. I don't care. I've done it a bunch of times, but I just, the more holes, more potential leaks, yada, yada. So what I'm going to do is I have a through hole on this, um, in my engine that runs through for my sump pump for my shower drain. Um, so it's basically a, a bilge pump hooked up to the shower drain and then it suits it over the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a T in here. It's a three quarter, um, sump drain goes over the side and then, um, down to a three eighths ID inside diameter to the overlook over board hose is what they call it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll tee this into my sump setup. And then what I got here is I have a check valve. It's a one way check valve. And so I'll do that on the sump side so that when I run the sump, it'll go through the check valve. Um, but when I run the overboard, I'm not really sure how much pressure it puts through that. Um, the 800 PSI salt water hits the gauge and then depending on what you're running sends some overboard so it could be under some pressure i'm not really totally sure so what i don't want to do is i don't want to send it up the sump circuit to the the pump and be putting pressure on the pump because it's a diaphragm pump so putting pressure to the diaphragm could be no way now and so um yeah so i'm going to do this and we'll see how that works all right it's kind of hard to see but you can see the blue line coming off i just teed into my uh, my water lines off my accumulator. Um, so that's for the backflow function. They need a constant pressurized water line. So off of any sink or whatever, um, I just teed right off the accumulator. Um, that's so that you just have a timer and you set the timer. And then when the timer opens the valve, it back flushes the whole system. So it cleans out all your salt, debris, all that stuff. Um, anyway, so I just kind of teed that in. It wasn't really anything too exciting on there. But yeah, I just teed into a fresh water line. So I just went and got some fittings and just teed right in kind real quick and easy there. Um, I was doing a lot of plumbing and I didn't really think it was important to show that. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here now I have the high pressure lines hooked up. Basically I ran them around. They're six feet long, so I had to kind of use them up or cut them, which I didn't want to do. Um, Pre-filters, panels all in, big old high pressure pump. I got these guys in here. You can see the high pressure line there. And then, we've got our panel mounted over here. That little guy is pretty slick. And over here, you can see you got the high pressure will be the salt water going through. This will be the fresh water going through from one main membrane to the other. And then, yeah, so the batteries are just back in this little guy here. And so this is just double A batteries. And this is your back flush timer. It's pretty straightforward, but this is what that hose comes. So this will be pressurized water here. And then when uh, you basically turn the dials, you want to do back flush, you can set it for manual couple days, a couple hours, every couple weeks, or every week, sorry. Um, you can kind of set it on whatever regiment you want. And then once this thing opens a valve, it just uses your own water pressure and your fresh drinking water to, to flush it through, which is a pretty cool feature. All right, so it's time now to fire this thing up. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous. There's so many fittings in here. Um, so what I did is I actually have the fresh water line unhooked. I'm gonna kind of spit that I had unhooked right there. So I'm gonna kind of spit that into the bilge. Nothing's not gonna get hurt by anything in here. Um, but instead of just dumping into my freshwater tank, I wanna make sure my salt content's down and stuff running this thing the first time. So yeah, I'm gonna turn it on. Um, let's see if we have leaks, hopefully not. Um, we'll see what happens. Dirty open. Let's do this guy. Now we got water coming in. So first things first, we want to fill the boost pump with salt water. You can actually see the salt water coming in. Got the boost pump running. And there's actually a, a little dial that comes with this boost pump. 
and you can adjust it. They said you want to, it'll kind of self adjust as needed. 15 PSI is what I think it said. So I'll do a little adjustment there, but now it's time to start the big pump. Should be that salty mess coming out. Do a good old taste test. Wow, that is crazy. Just crystal clear drinking water. That's that's or crystal clear. It tastes just super clean. Wow. Total is all solids. 130 and dropping. Can deal with that. That's not bad. So it's kind of running around in that video. Showing I fired up just, there's so many fittings on this thing. I had one small leak on the low pressure side of the high pressure pump. It's one of these push-in fittings. I'm not a big fan of these push-on plastic fittings. To each your own, but I'm not a big fan of them. Uh, but one that was installed from them started dripping. I tightened it down, it seems like it's fine now. But uh, yeah, so I was just kind of running around doing that. So everything fired up good. Uh, the I really like that this panel has the TDS meter on it to see what the salt total dissolved solids is and stuff is and everything's working great I mean um, we're at the marina now so I don't run around it a whole lot because marina water is nasty so I don't really want to run it through <laughs> and make any actual water here and so we'll probably take it out and actually take it out here soon um, and start using it so even though we're at the marina um, anytime it gets below freezing on a marina, they turn the water off. So um, we're getting to a point where we're going to have to start using this thing. So the next time I turn the water off, we'll go outside and make water. But um, for now, uh, yeah, it's so installed. I'm going to keep running it, you know, and checking for leaks. That's the biggest thing. There's a lot of plumbing on here. I'm not worried about any of the high pressure Titan fittings. I'm worried there's a lot of push connect fittings. Um, my only advice for someone to do is make sure you push them all in. All my push connects were good, but there's a few fittings that all these old plastic on plastics, I had to put a couple Titans on everything, um, or a couple things. So, but yeah, so far so good. I'm really happy with it. Um, we're making clean water. Uh, I tasted it. Tastes great. It's crazy that, you know, we're taking salt water, clean water. And then one of the big features, again, I think I mentioned before, but I really liked is this back flush. So we got our fresh drinking water. So I'm just gonna set this thing for five minutes. You'll hear it click. And then now what it's gonna do is it'll start running my sink water through this whole system. And it's just automatically doing it now. And you'll start to see the water running through and then it goes through this overflow valve and out the side of the boat so that was one thing i was unclear when i was doing this okay is how that back flush system works so just use your fresh drinking water i think it says a half hour back flush is like two gallons so it's not too bad and so i'll probably back flush mine every time i use it um i think it's worth it to keep the crap out of it but yeah so far so good uh, we'll do a more detailed review when we're out using it more so we just want to get everything dialed in now but um yeah so far so good it runs great i'm super happy with it the night or do you want to head back to the boat <laughs> bask in the glory <laughs> <laughs> it's warm around here it's right we're out behind the sea don't want to sleep in because i got something to prove